You know, um, I was baptized in 1976, and I remember at that time <clears throat> that feeling of, of cleanness and newness and just like a new start, brand new start. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, like how to, how to, how to start over new with, with Christ. And so Jay <clears throat> comes from us, comes to us from BC, right? And he's going to be talking with us on that tonight. So it's going to be a great lecture. And uh, we just want to pray that God will give us his blessing. So let's do that now, shall we? Kind Heavenly Father, we want to ask your blessing before we open the word. We want to pray that you'll be here in a special way and that you will touch our hearts and draw us close to you. That's our greatest desire, that you will um, just be near us. We love being in your presence, and may we have your presence here with us this evening as Jay speaks to us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Jay. Uh, we're in this together, and uh, there now we can now we have some sound. Just want you to know that I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here this evening. And it's always nice to look at scripture together, isn't it? Because then we can kind of figure out what, where we're going, what we want to do in our lives, and uh, just enjoy some time together. So let's uh, go into our topic for tonight, and uh, our topic is how to die right and live to tell about it. Seriously, we will show you tonight how to get a brand new life and how to live forever. Just got to get my clicker working. No. Thanks. Thank you. point that I want you to remember is that the Holy Spirit will make this happen. And when you make your decision to be baptized into Jesus Christ, it's going to be the Holy Spirit that's going to say, Jay, uh, it's time to make that decision. His name was Abby Hoffman. He was born in 1937 in the United States, and he became a political rebel back in the 60s and 70s. And he led many protests against the American government and the American way of life. And as I was going over this, I thought it's interesting on the news right now, they're talking about that uh, they're doing protests about money and the big banks and the things that are going on in the states. And I don't know if you drive down to just before the freeway there, you see those people standing there all the time with their signs and stuff. I don't know if you've noticed that. Every night when I go there, they're standing there with their signs and uh, they're not happy with things. They want things to change. One time, Abby led a protest against some capitalism, and he and some friends went to the New York Stock Exchange and uh, threw dollar bills, if you can imagine this, over the railing to the traders down below. And he, I guess they wanted to see what would happen. So they threw the dollar bills over, and all the people started scrambling, grabbing the dollar bills and, and just going for them. And to Abby, that was like, yeah, these people are, that's all they care about is money. In the mid-1970s, Hoffman was arrested on a drug charge. And then rather than face that uh, trial, he changed his name to Barry Freed had plastic surgery, and he also had plastic surgery to change his appearance. But years later, he turned himself into police, and in 1980, he got a light prison sentence. Finally, in 89, Abby was committed suicide, overdosing on sleeping pills. What can we learn from the story of Abby Hoffman? Mr. Hoffman tried to change his own life himself. He got a new name, a new face, a new identity, and all in an attempt to get away from his past life. It didn't work out. The pull was so strong for him to go back that even despite the threat of jail, uh, he eventually committed suicide. Now I have a very important question for you. Do you have a past life that you're trying to get away from? Are there things you've done that make you feel bad? Things that make you feel guilty, ashamed, afraid? Or perhaps you're struggling with bad habits. Things you know are wrong you'd like to be freed from. Perhaps it's tobacco or drugs or alcohol or something sexual or a bad temper hatred or pride. Maybe you struggle with your past life. Others, you've wronged them and uh, bad things that you've done to them and you just 
want that to be done away with. You don't want that anymore in your life. And worst of all, perhaps we can't forgive ourselves for what we've done and the wrongs that we've caused. Take courage, my friend. If any of these categories fit you, I have a message of hope for you. First, if you have done wrong, you are not alone. The Bible teaches all have done wrong. We're all sinners. I was thinking it's nice to, it's nice to not to be alone, to be together, but I'm not sure we want to all be together on this one. Like, <laughs> we're all sinners. <laughs> As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. Don't worry, these texts, they're not encouraging, but <laughs> it gets more encouraging. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. It's pretty clear, isn't it? A story is told about Adolf Eichmann, the notorious Nazi war criminal. When on trial in Jerusalem, Eichmann confronted one of his accusers. When the man saw Eichmann face to face in the courtroom, he fainted. And later he was asked, why did you faint? And he asked him, was it because he saw that he was all evil? The man replied, no, when I looked at Eichmann's face, I saw myself. I saw my own potential for evil. Yes, we all have great potential for evil. And not just potential either. We all know evil one way or another. And we've all done it ourselves. You remember the New Orleans uh, Hurricane Katrina? And what happened there, how the city was flooded? While the police no longer could function effectively, thousands of people became looters, committed rapes, and other acts of violence. There was no justification for it. They just went on this violent rampage. Some even became snipers, firing weapons at police, even rescue helicopters. Whatever bad things you may have in your past, I'm here today to give you hope. Hope of forgiveness, hope of salvation, hope of acceptance with God, hope of a new life free from sin and from guilt. Doesn't that sound wonderful? That hope for all of us is in Jesus, the place where we sinners connect with him, and we connect with him at the cross where he died for us. My friend, don't ever feel too bad to come to the cross. Jesus died for the worst sinners at the cross. Jesus died for the New Orleans snipers, the rapists at the cross. The Apostle Paul put it this way, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. There, now we have some positive. Oh, to save sinners. What is a chief? Can anyone tell me what a, what a chief is? Is he, what order does he have? He's the head. He's the, the main guy. And uh, Paul says, I'm, I'm a chief and a chief of sinners. Regardless of your past, regardless of how bad you've been, regardless of how bad you might be right now, you have forgiveness, healing, and restoration at the cross through Jesus. How many of you want that today? I do. How many of you are sick of your past life? How many of you are sick of your sins? How many of you are sick of your bad habits, sick of your guilty conscience? It seems like we don't even have to ask these questions, does it? But we need to ask them because it give, kind of gives us that healing aspect to our lives when we admit that, hey, yeah, I don't want this anymore. How many of you want a new life in Christ? Yes. Well, my friend, I want you to know God is willing tonight to wipe away your, your sins and make your slate clean. Tonight you can experience the fact that you are loved and accepted by God despite your sins and your past mistakes. Accept Jesus tonight as Lord and Savior and you can have a fresh start. A brand new life, receiving new life in Christ. Isn't that good news? It is indeed. I believe there are many of you here that have already made that choice, that you have given yourself to Jesus, and that's wonderful. And uh, you've claimed all the promises of God that are found in Jesus. Through him they become ours. What a wonderful opportunity God off offers us through Christ. Amen? I was thinking of some of those, and I thought of Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then if you go down to Philippians 4, 19, my, and my God shall supply all your what? All your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus. We don't have to worry. Like, there's just tons of stuff there. And it's just like Jesus will do it for us. There's so many. And he who has begun a work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
Now this leads us to a very important topic this evening, so please listen carefully. It is something Jesus did when he began his ministry. What do you think it is? Does anybody know what Jesus did when he began, began his ministry? Baptized, yes. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. Jesus himself was baptized. If Jesus, the sinless one, said he needed to be baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness, how much more important is it for you and me to be baptized? As his followers, we want to follow his example, don't we? Now let's look at what Jesus told his disciples about the importance of baptism. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Not only do we have Jesus' example of baptism, how he commanded his disciples to do it, but we have the obvious example that Christ himself was baptized. And um, it, it was a command that he gave that people be baptized. That's why we find uh, throughout the New Testament examples of baptism. In the book of Acts, Peter gave a powerful sermon where thousands gathered in Jerusalem. And near the end of the sermon, he said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Here we see the instruction to those who accepted Jesus to be baptized. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 people were baptized that day. From the earliest days of church, those who made the decision to follow Jesus were baptized. Another time, I really like this story, another time uh, Paul was in jail in Philippi with some of his friends, and the, there was an earthquake and the walls came down and they stayed in, they didn't, they didn't leave and the jailer was about to uh, kill himself with his sword and they called out, don't do it don't kill yourself, we're here, we're standing here and he was just shocked because like the walls have fallen down why don't you just run out and leave and he, he couldn't believe it and he was so impressed because he just saw God's power that these people had stayed there even though they could have escaped and so he just wanted to know, well, why? What could be in these people that they would, would, wouldn't leave when the walls came down? So he just cried out, what, what must I do to be saved? And note the apostles' answer. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were, were in the, his house. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. You really have to put yourself in the story, don't you? And just really get into the story to realize what's happening and how incredible it was that it just snowballed. He told his family and they just everybody just wanted to be baptized because they just recognized that God was in this and there's just no other way. Like The power of God was evident. Again, we see how important it is for baptism. We see from Jesus' example and his command that as his sons and daughters, we need to follow his example and to be and to obey him, don't we? Let's look at another interesting New Testament story. Here, Philip preached to a man the Bible refers to only as a eunuch who had great, over, great authority under queen, the queen of Ethiopia. He talked to him about the death and resurrection of Jesus as the Messiah, and the man came under conviction. He said, I need to, I need to be baptized. What happened next? Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. I thought it was interesting here how the eunuch, as he was just riding along in the chariot, he just said, hey, there's some water. I need to get baptized. You would think it would be the other way. You'd think that uh, Philip would say, hey, there's some water. Do you want to get baptized? But it was the eunuch that, that recognized that he needed to do this. And he, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went into the water. And he baptized him. Baptism always follows the profession of faith in Jesus. If you love Jesus, you'll want to serve him. If you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, you'll want to be baptized. As Jesus himself said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Do you believe in Jesus? Who here believes Jesus is the Son of God? 
Who here believes Jesus died for your sins? Who here believes that in Jesus all your sins are forgiven? Who here believes that through Jesus you can start over and have a new life? Notice it's all about Jesus and what he does for us. If you do, the next step you'll want to take is to follow his example and command of Jesus and, get, and to be baptized. Now this leads to another important question. What does the Bible mean, be baptized? The Bible is very clear about this. The Apostle Paul, who also baptized, explained it like this. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his what? Death. That's interesting. Hmm. Baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Paul's point is this. When we profess to follow Jesus, we have made our choice to die to what? To our old lives, to the, our worship of ourselves, and we want to live for God and live a new life in him. We choose, choose to serve a new master. We choose to make Jesus Lord of our lives. Were you once a drunk? You have the power of God choose, you have chosen by the power of God, you said, I don't want to no longer be a drunk, I want to get rid of that. Were you once sexually impure? You have chosen to die to that sexually impure life. Were you once violent, greedy, deceitful, hateful? When you make a commitment to Jesus, we choose to renounce our old ways, to die to that old person, to those things that we used to do. And that is what is symbolized by baptism and made possible by the Holy Spirit, whom God will send to empower your decisions and help you to live a better life. Isn't that awesome? You're just God says, okay, Jay, I see that you want to start new today, and uh, you need some power to be able to do that. And so I'm just going to give you the Holy Spirit, and he'll help you do that. So beautiful faith transaction. It's just like, wow, you're going to help me to do that, to live a better life. Then by going down into the water, symbolically buried in the waters with Jesus, you are showing the world that you have made a decision to die to that person you once were. A number of years ago, a young man from a non-Christian home was studying the Bible with some, some Christians. After being convicted of the truths in the Bible, he chose to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and he decided to be baptized. None of his family or friends were supportive. They were strongly against his baptism. He told a friend he was going to get baptized. Listen to what the friend said. The friend said, I hope you drown. In a spiritual sense, baptism is about dying, dying to our corrupted human nature, receiving a new divine nature. This enables us to become like Jesus. It's about what Paul says a few verses later in Romans 6. Our old man was crucified with Christ, with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. But that's only at the beginning. We don't just go under the water to die to our human nature. We come up out of the water a new person in Christ. We may still make bad mistakes, but we now have a new godly nature operating in us. It's wonderful. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, and the Bible tells us. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's not just the old life that's passed away. We have a new life in Jesus. We have been born again into a whole new existence in what Paul calls the newness of life. The Greek word for this kind of life is different from the word used to describe other kinds of life. It is the word zoe, which means life as it is in God. I want this kind of life, don't you? Millions of people around the world can testify of this new life in Jesus and how wonderful it is. I want you to think just for a second if you've witnessed the change of people in your lives from being this person that wasn't so nice to being a nice person. Have any of you ever had that happen to you? In your own life? I have in my own life. And some of the meanest, nastiest people get changed. And you're just like, whoa. Such is the new life God offers you and me, a life symbolized by baptism. His name was Ron. He was a violent member of a tough street gang in New York. You didn't want to get him upset if you knew what was good for you. He was a tough guy. Then through the amazing providence of God and the love of a Christian friend, Ron gave his heart to Jesus. This tough, violent street kid put away his knives and guns and instead picked up the Bible. Today he's an evangelist 
doing around the world what I'm doing today, preaching about Jesus. That's because he made the decision to die to his old nature, and he obtained a new life in Jesus. That's what baptism is all about. That's a great exchange. Here, you can take this old life. I'll take that life. Thank you. Wouldn't you like to do the, to have that new life too? The act of baptism is our public expression that we have decided to follow Jesus. We tell everyone we now are followers of Jesus Christ. We have one final important question to answer. When the Bible talks about being baptized, what does that mean? The Bible says there is only one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Only one baptism, the Bible says. Like everything God asks us to do, man has tampered with. Some baptize with sprinkling water on babies. Some pour water on children. One baptizes in rose petals. Another baptizes people in wine. And uh, Pastor Dave was telling me that somebody took a hose and just a big fire hose and just said, now just, just sprayed everybody and said, now you're baptized. <laughs> so some people invent some really interesting ways to be baptized. <laughs> However, the Bible tells us how baptism is carried out. To begin with, the Greek word baptizo tells us baptism means to dip in or under. A friend told me that he went to the, a restaurant and the Greek waiter told him what the word baptizo meant in Greek. The waiter broke off a piece of donut, put it in his coffee and said, there, I've just baptized my donut. Of course, the Bible doesn't talk about baptizing in coffee. The Bible says we baptize in water. Thus, it is clear that baptism is done by submersing people underwater. It signifies that we've totally immersed in Christ. That's an awesome analogy. Totally immersed in Christ. Totally filled by him and living for him. Totally given over to him. Totally surrendered to him. Describing this work, John the Baptist says, the Bible that people came from all over and were baptized by him in the Jordan. They baptized in the river. Baptism makes no sense if they were just sprinkled. The Bible describes Jesus' baptism by John saying, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the, what? The water. Jesus came up immediately out of the water. What does that sound like to you? Sprinkling or immersion? Yeah. Of course, immersion. You don't come up after sprinkling. <laughs> now, John was baptizing in Anon near Salem because there was much water there. Much water there? Why would that matter? You don't need much water to get sprinkled. A cup could do. Remember texts about the eunuch who was, who was baptized? So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Philip and the eunuch went into the water. It's pretty clear, isn't it? Yes, the Bible is clear. Baptism is done by immersion. There's also a great deal of archaeological evidence that supports uh, baptism. And it, it illustrated in the early churches, uh, ancient baptistries can still be found in North Africa, Turkey, and Italy, and other places that testify of the early church and how uh, people were baptized by immersion. There's no reference in the Bible about sprinkling, much less baptizing infants. These practices came in much later long after the church lost its way. All these are traditions of men, not commandments of God. Remember what Jesus said? And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You may ask, is it really necessary to be baptized? Listen what Jesus told Nicodemus about the importance of getting baptized. For assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Sounds pretty important, doesn't it? Again, from the lips of Jesus. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Jesus is linking belief in baptism and what? Salvation. Yeah. Of course, baptism d doesn't save us. It's a simply an outward sign that we have been saved. Some might ask, should a person ever be rebaptized? Of course, there's no need to be rebaptized every time we sin. That's not what the Bible is teaching. But there are two circumstances where rebaptism could be appropriate. One, if you were once a believer, and but now you've left Jesus, and now you want to come back and recommit your life to Jesus, rebaptism may, may well be in order for you. Number two, if you've accepted the new truth, discovered your life has been out of harmony with the clear teaching from Scripture, then the Bible teaches that rebaptism is in order. You can read such stories in Acts 19 
where Paul rebaptized some believers who learned the new truth. Have you learned important new truths these meetings? I hope that you have learned new important truths. Then re rebaptism may be in order for you. Now, I want to ask you a personal question. Anyone who's never been baptized, answer it prayerfully in your own heart. Are you ready? Here's the question. Are you ready to be baptized? You are ready if you answer yes to the following. First, do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and that he has died for your sins? Second, have you claimed for yourself the salvation Jesus offers? Do you claim Jesus as your personal Savior right now? Do you claim his, his righteousness as your only way to heaven? Third, have you repented of your sins? The Bible says repent and let every one of you be baptized. What does it mean to repent? Okay. To be sorry? Okay. Yeah, to turn away, repent. It means that you stop doing what you were doing. Repent and let every one of you be baptized. Have you claimed his forgiveness for yourself personally? If you can answer yes to these questions, the Bible teaches that you are ready to be baptized. You are ready to make a statement to the world and to your family and friends that you are a new person in Jesus and are seeking to walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. If that's you, I say as the Apostle Paul said, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. A young woman in Africa was studying her Bible for six months and now wanted to be baptized. Her husband was furious and said if she was baptized that he would kill her. She determined to move forward, believing this was what God wanted her to do. Her husband pulled out a gun and said, if you do this, I will shoot you when you return home. How would you like that if he said, well, I'm going to get baptized get a gun pulled out on me. What could she do? She believed in Jesus and had committed her life to him. So despite her husband's threats, she bap was baptized and left her life in God's hands. When she had come home, her husband stood at the door outside with his gun in his hand. Did you do it, he demanded. Yes, husband, I did it, she said. I am now ready to die. The, hu the husband looked at her, saw the peace on her face, he saw she was ready to die for her faith, and he, he dropped his gun. Six months later, he too committed his life to Christ and was baptized. Amen to that. Her public confession, profession, her faith in Jesus completely changed her husband's life. Yes, friends, baptism is life and death decision. It's a choice to die to our old self and to live for Jesus. In some cases, those who make that choice do literally lose their lives here on this earth. That has happened. That's why a long time ago Jesus said, it would be nice if we read this one together since we're almost at the end of our presentation. Ready? For whoever deserves to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Amen. Are you ready to die to self and to live for Jesus regardless of the cost? Don't you want to express your desire to be wholly his by following your Lord and his example in being baptized? If it is your desire to follow your Lord in this sacred rite, I invite you to step out wherever you are, come down to the front here, and tell the world that you decided to be baptized and uh, to prepare for baptism in the near future. So if it's touched you tonight, if it's on your heart that you'd like to be baptized, I invite you to come forward now, and I'll come down here with you. Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's nice that we get, it's nice on a meeting like this, we've had mostly, we've had our cards mostly that we've done each night, but now we get an opportunity to stand up and say, Lord, I love you and I want to get baptized. And it's just a nice way of, of uh, showing our love for our Savior by making that a public, a public statement. We don't have our pianist tonight and she would just have a little music playing for us, but that's okay. I'll just give you a, just a couple seconds if anybody wants to be baptized. 
would like to make that decision. It was a, I was thinking, um, we'll never have another opportunity in our lives again to, this might be our last opportunity to decide to come up and be baptized. And um, that's it. Okay. Great. Awesome. Good. Uh -huh. There was a song, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a Christian song or anything, but I listened to it years ago, and it said, uh, there will never be another tonight. And uh, it, that is, there's truth in that. Yeah. And so I'm going to have prayer for this. What's your name? So I'm going to have prayer for release, and uh, let's bow our heads, and let's rededicate our lives and release to Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for release, and uh, I just pray that you bless her just now. Uh, thank you for her trust in you and her willingness to come forward, and uh, it's just a stepping stone uh, on our way to the kingdom, and uh, we leave her in your hands. Thank you that you'll look after her. And uh, may we, as fellow believers, look after each other and pray for each other and for release. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the clarity of the topic that we studied. And uh, we love you very much in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Okay, so you have a, you have, a, have to fill out our cards. And it says, so we're just going to fill out the front. It says, was the presentation clear? And I have questions and would like to talk to someone. And I have a prayer request. And I wanted you to know that if you put prayer requests that uh, this last week, we looked at all the prayer requests and we prayed over them. And so it's a very valuable and worthwhile thing to do. And uh, I know God honors that. So don't forget to put your prayer requests on that. And when you're done that, then the deacons will collect your cards and we'll take a, a little break. And then where's Harold? He's up next. So take a five-minute break and then we'll have our draw.